Aflatoxins are very important because they're very potent cancer-causing agents. They cause cancer at levels lower than any other natural products. So they're very, very concerned there. They also have a great effects on ch childhood development. They have a huge effect on the immune system and they're acutely toxic. So if you get exposed to aflatoxins at, at certain levels, it will kill you outright. And that can be an issue in the U.S. in animals. Sometimes animals are fed, um, are fed levels of aflatoxins that are unacceptable and the animals will actually die and you'll have large killings. It's not unusual to have dogs dying from pet food that's contaminated or young calves and cattle dying from having too much aflatoxin or very large deaths of birds in different commercial operations. And of course, we only hear about the commercial operations because they're the only ones that complain to the government about them. Well, there's always challenges having people, particularly in Africa, it's always tr troubles having people understand uh, the severity of aflatoxins and how this poison that you're consuming every day will actually affect your health over the long term, over five years and 10 years, and affect your children over years. And it's not something that will kill you maybe necessarily tomorrow or the next day, but when you eat low levels of toxin, you're just gradually poisoning yourself. And it's difficult for someone to relate back to when they actually ate the aflatoxin because it's so far back in the past. Who remembers what they ate for breakfast yesterday, let alone a month ago? Biocontrol is the only product that we found over these 40 years of research in the U.S. that actually can limit aflatoxin contamination and, the, and that the farmers have actually found is effective. And it's a very great option in Africa as well. And it's a great option because we know every time we use a biocontrol, we reduce aflatoxins in the environment, in people's farms, in their homes, and in their foods. Even if we don't actually go measure the aflatoxins, we, knew, we know by using the biocontrols, we're reducing aflatoxins. I think it's a big challenge to, to communicate the biocontrol and aflatoxins in Africa and to get good communication across. In the U.S. it has been relatively easier because we work with farmers groups and farmers that come to us and they say please help us control aflatoxins and sometimes they'll see I'm doing an activity in California and they'll come from thousand miles away and say come we need you in Texas and they actually will develop funding and things for us to do it. Uh, in Africa it's more complicated because many of the farmers are smaller scale and they're not, they're not bound together by very powerful grower organizations and very often there's not a good, even a good communication from the government to the farmers. And so we need to create this communication. We need to make the farmers understand how it's impacting their health and how it could even impact their, their financial well-being. Uh, and we need to make the tools accessible to them. We need to make the biocontrol accessible to them at a very cost-effective level where it's, where it's relatively inexpensive for them to use the biocontrol. It's definitely the only problem we know. It's the only, it's only, the only solution that we actually can today tell you if you do this, this will reduce your aflatoxins. And if you do it ye multiple years in a row, it'll reduce the aflatoxins even lower. And it even may give us the potential to eliminate it in certain areas. So aflasafe is a very real alternative. Uh, the trick for us as researchers is to make it so that it's a tool that's inexpensive, readily available. And so basically the, the small holder can use it almost for free. So our trick is to be able to get it to the, to the small holder in a very cost-effective manner so that actually can have the widest possible effect. The cheaper we make it, the easier it is for someone to use it, and the more routinely we can use it. So right now, we're trying to find premium users, like people that make flour for a premium market, or people that make baby food, or people that make something that they can market and say, we're aflatoxin free. So the higher level consumer will go after it and spend a little more money on it. However, we need to learn how to drive utilization of it for health. 
So AFLSAFE needs to be used not just for this economic purpose, but we need to hit it, fit a much broader uh, cross-section of the farmers in Nigeria and across Africa, where actually the farmer will utilize it in order to give his family or her family a greater health in the long term and a greater opportunity for the future. And so how are we going to drive this? Part of this would be just knowledge of the farmer knowing it's available and having the governments understand that yes, we need to facilitate getting this to the farmers at a very low cost. Well, I guess really IITA began to interact with us uh, back in the mid-1990s. Uh, and they were interested in some of the early results we had on biocontrol, and we saw it was working. And they were interested in aflatoxins in general. They felt it was causing a severe effect on African populations, and that there was a severe need in Africa, and that it wasn't being addressed seriously. And so really, IITA went after us. They came and they said, look, please come, please interact, help us start developing a good program to address this issue and to see what we can do to alleviate the problem in Africa. And, and this approach by IITA has taken several forms. It's been the development of AFLOSAFE and biocontrol, but it's also been development of resistant cultivars by a portion of the IITA staff and other simple practices like looking at the impact of storage solutions and stuff like that. So really, it's been great forethought that IITA put into trying to develop solutions for Africa for aflatoxin and looking around the world for where the best researchers in aflatoxin were and bringing their solutions to Africa. Well IIT's role has been a great one. Uh, they basically they have they have looked at at what seems to be working in other parts of the world and then they try to see what would stop it from being really implemented in Africa and then there's this huge research gap there that has to be filled. Someone has to go in and actually understand how to adapt the technology to the different countries in Africa, not just, not just to West Africa, but to Southern Africa or to West Africa. And, and in each clay, or East Africa, in each place, there might be slightly different things that need to be done, or even greatly different things that need to be done. So really, I think the role has been very large and I think the role of advocacy for actually utilizing these science solutions in Africa has been very large as well. And the role also for finding partners in the different nations and in the different uh, NGOs that are available and recruiting them into the cause has also been quite large and quite important. In general, farmers like biocontrol. They, they take very well that they're growing, when they grow crops, they're also growing fungi associated with crops. And they understand very readily that by us seeding the fields with nice fungi, that we end up providing a benefit. And it's actually very similar to cultivating crops. And so growers have been very receptive to using a natural fungus that is native to the areas in which they live, and that they're actually just trying to select the beneficial good fungi that are in the area and encourage them to be associated with their environment and in their fields. And I think, I think growers, for some reason, when administrators and when government officials can't see that this is something beneficial, the farmers seem to understand intuitively that this is the way they want to go and this is something beneficial for them. I think so. I think African farmers have been very positive with us so far. And I think as you explain how they work and they get a benefit from them, it's a very simple process for them. We're not giving them a lot of extra work to do. It's something very simple. They just have to spread a few grains around the field one time only, and they acquire this benefit. And I think they've been extremely receptive and very open to utilizing technology.